Hi everyone and welcome to this Q&A with Shana Gorman, one of the creative directors of Nix Drone Choir and Elizabeth Bernholtz, also known as Gazelle Twin. Hello both of you, how are you Hi. tonight? Good. Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, it was a shame, I was sad not to be able to come and witness um, the recording of the performance you did the other, the other day, but I did see um, the performance of Deep England at the London Jazz Festival back in 2019. It sounds crazy that it was that long ago, but and um, yeah, it was really incredibly powerful performance. And 
you know, I'm quite interested in ideas of Albion and paganism and things like that. So I'm really excited to be able to chat with you both. Um, maybe it would be useful to start with just um, a little bit of a kind of background on how the Deep England project sort of came about and the genesis of, of the piece that people have seen earlier. Um, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll start if that's okay. I mean, I um, I was um, just finishing up um, an album called Pastoral, which I released in September 2018. Um, and just I was just as I was getting to sort of closing that um, that recording that mix I heard from from Nix um, from Sean and the um, the directors um, Philippa and Josh and they told me all about what they do and what they wanted to do and what they were planning um, and would I be up for doing a, a gig with them and like reworking some of my material. With the choir and it was uh, it was an instant yes um my god it feels like a long time ago <laughs> it's like uh, three years ago um and yeah just didn't look back really it just kind of started off as like a one-off show and then it grew into another opportunity at um london jazz festival in 2019 and um and then a record and then this this and here we are and, and Sean, perhaps you could say a bit about why you kind of approached Elizabeth and what was what was it about that record that you were kind of drawn to? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it kind of it all happened as we started next. Uh, one of our first projects that we kind of came together for was we really wanted to work with loads of different um, contemporary female electronic artists. And Elizabeth was like the top of my list. And we sent out this email with this like PowerPoint thing. We haven't, we hadn't even really had any recordings or anything. Elizabeth was one of the first people to get back and be like, absolutely yes. And we were so excited. And then I remember calling you and, and Steve and we hadn't even, we didn't know pastoral existed actually. And, and I had gone through all of your back catalog and I'd planned all these ones that I really wanted to do. And then I remember mentioning some of them and you were like, look, this sounds amazing. I've just, I've just actually created this album pastoral. And then you sent me, you sent me a copy. And I remember feeling so privileged that I had this like pre, pre-released copy. And just as soon as I listened to it, I was like, shit, this is it. This is going to be amazing. I could instantly hear so much magic so much kind of like ancient magic and all this amazing kind of contemporary little little, little. and I was like this is fucking awesome like this is yeah amazing and so yeah as we said we the first that was part of the first series we did and we I think we originally put it in the pickle factory or something and then it got upgraded to the oval space because it was sold out so quickly and then as soon as we finished that show we were like I have to do this again and then we managed to get some arts council funding to put on this opera basically in the South Bank Centre and then um, straight afterwards recorded the album and then again we we're just always looking for opportunities to create something else and so then this amazing opportunity to come and make a film with Ian and Jane came up so here we are. And I wonder could you tell me a little bit about sort of the title and what Deep England means to you and what it, and what it's what it signifies? Um, well, Deep England is the name of one of the, the pieces that we um, reworked or that Sean arranged and, we, and as a choir we all um, performed together. And it's, it was actually a B-side from one of the singles from Pastoral, it's not actually on the album. Um, but it was one that had a really heavy drone and it just it kind of lent itself perfectly for, um, for a sort of call arrangement. And I think I have to say, I think out of the out of the sort of early demos that Sean created, um, that that just in, was an instant hit, and I don't think it's really changed that much from your first arrangement, Sean. It's just it was such a perfect um, version, and it was just it's just such a an, a joy to sing it as well, and to hear other voices being part of that. Um, so I think we just we all kind of it felt like everything it kind of embodied everything about the project and about the choir and lyrically as well so 
I think Deep England as a name just kind of felt all-encompassing, much like that that one piece does as well. I don't know if you've got other thoughts on that, Sean. Yeah, I mean, the the that piece to me is the most that sticks out is like a huge landscape. So there's like the, I can picture like these kind of rolling plains of, of drone and, and sounds that make all these mountains and valleys and hills and kind of this gorgeous kind of view of England from like a pastoral sense. And then it's also got all these interwoven bits of like quite scary whispers and things as well, like this twist of like a dark side. And then Elizabeth's amazing kind of um, lyrics of my retail park, my cul-de-sac, my England. And then there's all these, yeah, these moments of just kind of, they, they're always quite funny to me, I think, of all these kind of these different parts of England that come out and, and are shown through that piece. So that's how I also feel, yeah, exactly, it's all encompassing. It feels like that's the, it's tongue in cheek and it's also magic and it's, um, and it feels like a lot of different parts of the album and of the people who have made it. So yeah, it, it does feel like a beautiful kind of overarching title, really. Because you know, I'm I've been quite sort of interested in some of these kind of um, you know pagan histories or pagan fantasies, <laughs> however you want to look at it. Um, and you know, a, an idea of of Albion and our sort of ancient past, and. I wonder, you know, what kind of drew you to those themes, and you know, there's it's quite a dark, it's quite a dark vision, I guess, that the that the show and that the music um, paints of Albion of of this deep England. So I wonder um, what what kind of initially drew you to those sorts of themes, ideas, and kind of symbolism. Um, I think when because it's so heavily connected to to pastoral, pastoral for me was an album what um kind of kind of coming to terms with uh identity of you know of, of being english really and just kind of in in sort of the wake of brexit to try to sort of make sense of what the kind of br endless branding of britishness and and you know specifically englishness is and what it, the truth behind it really is um, and I kind of like like Sean kind of mentioned the tongue-in-cheek thing there's a lot of that going on in pastoral it's not just a kind of bleak um, <laughs> kind of you know relentlessly dark sort of approach it's kind of more trying to sort of gather all of all of the elements you know that that I kind of personally feel that I've kind of absorbed growing up in England but also just like taking the mick out of you know England's own, own identity of itself it's kind of this, this kind of weird sort of wretched seriousness that's just happened with nationalism and how that's kind of just getting kind of to joke joke level but also sort of quite scary too like to sort of you know levels of sort of tribal tribal kind of action and I think where the kind of pagan connection comes in is obviously like looking back into deep the deep history of England and, and England's pagan history um, and that it's just a really rich um, subject matter to draw on in, in its kind of visual um, palette but also like um, in the symbolism like you said and kind of what it means I kind of it, it, it is kind of like a fantasy isn't it it's like I feel like women especially have have a really strong role to play in kind of these these kind of early rituals and I think and Sean will probably put this in in much better words than I can but just I think just kind of gathering all of those themes together it kind of made sense that us a group of women would be kind of drawn to bring out kind of more of that aspect of it so kind of like looking back to witchcraft and obviously there was a huge there's a huge history of you know abuse against women and you know through through the connection to these practices and I think we just wanted to really like excavate all of those different connections in you know the present from the from the you know raging present to the very deep past and, and it just kind of felt like where pastoral was kind of a bit more kind of hopping around 
past and present uh, future um deep england is really kind of it's really like stepping into a very kind of otherworldly place it's it's mm -hmm. it's but it's kind of it's sort of creating some kind of hellish ritual that you know that um that i think has been really satisfying to sort of get deeper into just just with you know with a group of people mm. um yeah purging <laughs> purging yeah, yeah. that darkness yeah. yeah i don't know if you want to add add something there Siobhan. yeah i mean philippa the our one of our creative directors she i think she coined the term a transcendental purge or someone reviewed it as that and it's like that's how it feels a lot of the time yeah i think um I think in its nature, when you have a group of women coming together, there is something, and singing, there is something that happens that feels very ancient and very cathartic and very earthly, um, and so, and very ritualistic as well. So the, the kind of, in its essence, even without any of the kind of lyrical or the sonic qualities that we're all kind of bringing out, I think it, it does draw us back to that instantly. Um, I think even like the first line, I mean, we do a version of the Jerusalem hymn, which is quite, um, which feels like the drones feel quite like, I don't even know why, but they feel like druidy kind of drones. Like it's very kind of, it's very earthy, I think the drone in that. And then the first lyric is, and did those feet in ancient times walk upon England's mountains green and all this kind of, it's bringing up all these images instantly of that, of that time. Um, but twisting it and and taking it through the ages through all these different sounds that we're using um, and I think another thing that kind of comes to mind when when you talk about that it's that, that from the ritual side of things to me it always feels like um, the the point of ritual and a lot of kind of pagan practices that I've seen have been like an honoring of the earth or an honoring of the elements or, or the environment and and with that comes an honoring of not only the well thank you for the sun but also thank you for death and thank you for the rain and thank you for darkness and I think that that to me feels like a massive thing that's been lost um which we kind of touch on a little bit and and we take the piss out of it as well I mean sometimes things get so dark it's funny or and and I think that's really beautiful as well I think that honoring the darkness I know I say that a lot a lot of the time but that to me feels really important like the the old gods where people would would celebrate these kind of evil or or dark characters in order to bring light to them um, and in order to honor the darkness that we all have in ourselves instead of reflecting it back on to politicians or all the shit in the news you know so to me it feels a lot of that and then also honoring the lightness and that coming through our voices as well there's so much kind of we have so much joy and kind of getting really and really high and divine at the same time so it's like we it's giving ourselves permission to just be all of these facets of of nature and of um and of history and I yeah so I don't know just that bit of a ramble <laughs> no, no, it's the, the best kind of the, the kind of ramble that answers all the questions and and more um yeah and I think also I think <laughs> I was talking to um Elaine Michener about about this actually in one of the previous gigs um this idea about kind of the female voice and how you know how you're expected to sound and needing to you know being made to sound pretty and palatable and this kind of a very kind of one-sided kind of um, view or idea of what a female what a woman's voice should sound like and what it should do and of course you know you've got you've got a lot of manipulation of voices as well happening in in, the, in this work and kind of really inverting <laughs> inverting that idea of you know how how a woman's voice should sound I wonder if that's something that's kind of conscious um or something that's kind of has emerged through your processes um I would say for me it's absolutely conscious and deliberate um and you know the, the the amazing thing that that you know quite simple technology really can afford is is the kind of range of identities that you can just kind of flick through and i i, I love nothing more than to get away from the sound of my actual voice just just i can't you know like i think after a while there's only so much type of singing that you want to do or hear and you know just from a listener's kind of perspective i love hearing 
things mangled up and chewed up and just kind of fucked up loads and and I love being able to do that too and I think uh, through the various albums that I've done I've kind of only grown to love that more and to, that it's kind of come to mean more more to me to be able to do that and it's not not always just so much about the ability to become more more powerful and, and sort of lower my voice and kind of become more masculine in some ways which I also really love doing um but there's kind of just the ability to just sort of transcend and transcend kind of species and you know just to be able to augment yourself in that way simply um as a performative kind of tool is just amazing and that's just doing it as a solo performer but to do that with a choir is like has been just the most immense awesome thing um i remember when i first read you know like the what what nicks do and it was just something that I, I think I'd dreamt about like for years, just like the idea of put, putting a whole choir through an electronic process. And I don't know if it had even been done or has been done. Um, and there they are doing it. And I was just so happy to be like involved with that. And it's just made me appreciate, you know, the technology that we have to, to do these things even more, especially, you know, in recent times where we've, there's been a lot of kind of, well, there's there's starting to become a lot more awareness of of um, you know women in electronic music, and it just feels like our voices are kind of a really important aspect of that too, as well as the machines. Uh, you know what we can do with our voices is especially important. Absolutely, and like from a collective voice perspective, yeah, like a look, uh, there's a few um, people in the choir who I sang with previously, and we. I've all done a lot of session singing and singing for big bands and these sorts of things. And I honestly, part of the reason why I wanted to go out on my own and do my thing, a, a different thing was just, I was so sick of just standing on stage and looking really, having to look really perfect and sing these flat notes with no vibrato for ages and just smile and do it. And I was like, there's got to be more than this. And I, and I think that's part, partly where it started from. And then, yeah, as Elizabeth said, I just absolutely, I could spend hours just going through different vocal processing plugins and singing in them or, or different gear. And just, it's, there's something so, yeah. I mean, I love the sound of my own voice. <laughs> something so, um, singing voice, yes, speaking voice. But there's something so, um, like, it's really strange hearing yourself. It's like seeing yourself with a filter on a thing. There's something so engaging about it. You really, it really, it feeds yourself back to you in such a strange way. And it's so enjoyable. And so when you've got this whole new spectrum to play with, as well that's kind of that's also the interesting bit of using it as a choir is like if you had everybody singing on extreme distortion it would sound too much so it's you're kind of re-orchestrating the sounds that it, it becomes like an electronic orchestra through voices so you have to have loads of different timbres and frequencies that don't clash with each other too much for it to work so for me it was a really interesting way for my brain to kind of figure out a challenge of okay how can we orchestrate this so that everybody fits together because it gets so chaotic sometimes we're in rehearsals or performances and someone's got some mad delay that's stuck on and it takes us 45 minutes to find out who even made it in the beginning it's just it's so fun it's so fun and the other thing with it is just like the technology just keeps getting more exciting like it doesn't stop it's like there's always a new cool thing that you could get or you will use or figure out and everybody's natural timbre of their voices interact with the software or the hardware completely differently so we've got this amazing singer Kalechi who does all our bass lines and her natural voice is so phenomenal and then pushed through like a huge octave pedal it's just like Ugh! like it's so <laughs> cool it's like I don't know. I think it's magical. <laughs> I wanted to ask a bit about just, you know, after the past year and a half or however long, long it's been, um, you know, what it was like to come together. And it sounds, this is a piece that you sort of work, worked on quite a long time ago and then sort of resurrecting that in this kind of, um, in this new, in this new way. I wonder what that experience was like for you, for you both. Just yeah it really um it really intense and wonderful beautiful um there were a lot of tears last week 
<laughs> there were a lot of tears when we got got back together and reunited and um a lot of anxiety and you know a lot of steam that needed to be let out and um but once we got through that it just became and then when it was kind of focused it's just been really helpful I, i'd say personally really helpful to sort of rebuild you know a kind of sense of calm a sense of kind of creativity that's like i guess i know a lot of people struggled with being it being creative in lockdown i kind of did but i also was very distracted with like having another baby and kind of just like looking after my my other kid but um yeah i mean i didn't achieve much and i think just to get back to get back to work really um but but not just any work you know making something making making a statement having something to sort of process all of all of this kind of strange anxiety um for the last year and a half has been i mean god i'm just so thankful for it because you know it's like a it's like a kind of therapy um it has, it has been for me um i mean the whole the whole the whole process with nix has been you know quite a, quite a changing quite a pivotal moment for me because i'm always usually creating stuff solo and i'm i'm quite I'm quite nervous really i'm quite sort of nervous about collaborations and you know i don't always have a huge amount of confidence with you know kind of stepping out of my com my comfort zone and stuff but but nick's just made it amazing from the off really and it's just only helped to kind of um just like inspire me more really just to just to kind of keep going with it all yeah. I mean, first of all, I got a little bit distracted by the fact that you said um, the film that we made last week, it's been, we, we literally filmed it last week and now it's here. Mm. <laughs> it's absolutely nuts to think that. Thank you to all the people that made it happen so quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, I do, the, the girls in the group, like I, the, the whole team actually, like I don't even, the, I can't even have imagined have gone through lockdown without all of them. Like we really just, even just, it sounds so lame, but just even like the WhatsApp and the signal groups of everybody, it just felt like such a support center. And it really is something about having friends that you do, that you come together for a creative purpose, which feels even more strengthening. So it's almost like the relationships that we have together are even stronger because of the work that we've done together singing and creating things a lot of us have kind of been playing and sending us sending each other different things and over over the period but coming together in real life I was really we we really tried to prepare ourselves to have a load of time and a load of space and a load of kind of slow moving together because it's really intense having not had interaction with people and then all of a sudden you're in London everybody's in the same space all the stuff's going on there's all these cameras there's all these things so yeah we made a massive effort to make sure everybody was feeling really safe and comfortable and um but the yeah it was it felt really phenomenal to sing it because the first day we we um we were just doing a lot of acapella singing in a really beautiful boomy room and it just felt so soothing it was like the sound of being inside all these other people's voices was just like, yeah, it feels like a big singing massage. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that sort of idea of a transcendental purge has, you know, has a kind of big collective mass purge through voice, through the voice, like probably had so much more um kind of meaning after this very kind of restrained and restricted time that we've we've mm. all we've all been in yeah yeah like in spades i think that moment sean just mentioned with us in the room i think i i just got to london and had walked through um sort of liverpool street at the sort of like happy hour <laughs> with my baby and my husband and it's our first time in London for like a year and a half and I was I was actually just like like in a turmoil was just like not a way to describe it I was I was so I found it so intense mm -hmm. and frightening and weird um 
and then to get into a room full of all these lovely faces that I hadn't seen for ages and all of this amazing activity ha happening and I was just as soon as I arrived I just sort of psh, it, I just started crying <laughs> so everyone was like uh uh <laughs> shit don't know what to do and then and then you know mi minutes after that we were in a room just singing and I was I was on all fours on the ground just going insolvency <laughs> and just, I was just like Oh, or was it glory? I don't know. It was just, but I was just like, oh, I just felt, oh, I just was like, thank God, thank God for that. Cause it just, I just needed it so much and just needed to just be with those people so much. And yeah, I, it was, it's hard to describe. I, it just felt, I felt so lucky to be able to do that. Me too. No, oh, sounds, <laughs> yeah, sounds, sounds lovely. Um, well, maybe just to end, um, it would be good to hear what you're kind of up to next and whether this particular project project um, will continue to have a life or if you're working on other things. Um, and just, you know, just sort of picking up on the idea of a kind of incantation and a ritual that, you know, that it obviously is for you all just coming together, but also this piece does something as well. It conjures something and there's a kind of, there's, a, there's an intent in that for, you know, in regards to what you're saying about Britain and where we're at politically and things like that. So I wonder kind of, yeah, what's what's the next stage of that incantation um, and yeah, what are you working on next? Sean, you go first. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the thing is we've done this, this is kind of almost like our third version of this show. We've never done it the same way or the, in the same format even. So it feels a little bit like it's in a constant state of kind of flux and evolution. So I, we've got a couple of ideas of things we could do and kind of, um, yeah, I mean, it's so, yeah, it could be, it could be anything, but it's, it's kind of figuring out ways of, um, making it sustainable and making it fit into whatever's going on at the moment. We don't know if we can be together outside performing all these sorts of things. That, um, so there's that. And then for us, we're just um, other next stuff. We're working on a few um, kind of film project kind of things and trying to figure out ways of we really want I really want to have like a really good reintegration camp where everybody just comes back together and just sings for a while for almost for no reason other than to just be with each other and sing to be honest um that feels really important to me especially after the time we've had it doesn't doesn't feel right to me to get stuck straight back into the exactly what was already going on it feels like there's been a lot of kind of lessons and new amazing kind of things that have come out in the last couple of years and I really want to honor them and play around with them quite a lot so that's that's what seems important to me but we were even Elizabeth and I were just emailing the other day we have we have to collaborate on more visual things like make do a film soundtrack or something together because it was just I mean I'm really I know that we're recording this before the film has been shown but the film is just absolutely amazing and I'm so excited for people to see it and and for it to go places and for us to do other work like that because it feels it felt so good and it feels amazing watching it yeah yeah absolutely does yeah I, I mean I'm, I'm just carrying on doing um while trying to write another album um probably hopefully for next year um and just kind of got a few other projects on the sort of simmer um hoping to to just do a couple more films over the next year or two but just kind of yeah just sort of like Sean to just kind of trying to take it easy a little bit and not kind of get you know to yeah just kind of reintegrate is, is what you said isn't it reintegrate into kind of working again and being creative again but with everything that's happened it's kind of it takes another a slightly different um, routine I think also I'm, I'm a, you know I now have two children instead of one so I'm kind of having to do redo everything like have, having to sort of assess everything so yeah but I'm, I'm lucky to have been able to work throughout the pandemic here and there and through and, and while I've had my children so just more of the same really I just I think I think what's going to come out of you know in, in film and in music over the next couple of years is going to be quite extraordinary 
Mm. And I think like we've we already were on the sort of, you know, the crest of this wave of purging, <laughs> um, in, you know, identity and kind of anxiety and fear and everything that's kind of been going on politically around the world for the last few years. But I think that's only probably set to kind of expand and there's there's probably going to be a wave of some incredible films and music and art and stuff coming so that's kind of I, I feel like that's the, the the most positive thing to kind of to, to to think of over the next few years and you know just like every war post-war has had an amazing surge of art you know art movements and stuff like that I feel like that's what's going to happen or is happening already and um, hopefully we're like a small part of that absolutely well that's a nice place to end from the darkness uh, comes light and i'm completely in dark, in dark. <laughs> you are, you are. it's getting it's getting slowly darker there <laughs> I thought it was just my eyes. No, no, it's just because it's getting late. Um, so yeah, let's leave before I'm completely sh shrouded in, in dark. But, um, and before the mushrooms eat you, Sean, yeah, mushrooms. Exactly. <laughs> uh, thanks both. It's so lovely to, to chat. And um, yes, have wonderful evenings and later. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.